about four years ago, we got a grant from the Gates Foundation to start looking at our teacher evaluations, but not just at the evaluation part, to look at it as a, a broader scope of how do your teacher evaluations support teachers and actually improve teaching? How do they affect uh, the teacher leadership positions in the organization? Um, how can they be used as uh, a tool to reward teachers and um, in their career as a teacher? So we're looking at a broader use of teacher evaluations. And so we started this process. Um, with different focus groups that were open to whatever teacher wanted to be involved in them. And it took us around three years to develop. Um, we piloted in different pieces and tried out things at different school sites, some organization-wide, some at a few school sites, received feedback from teachers and administrators, uh, revamped things, tried out new things, received more feedback. So it's an ongoing process. Um, and. Uh, just last year, we finally finished our evaluation process and our rubric tool uh, that administrators use when they go into classrooms. And that tool is very detailed. It was created by teachers um, based on the Charlotte Danielson model. Um, and it's very detailed so that it explicitly breaks down what effective teaching looks like. And it is a guide to help administrators and teachers self-assess and recognize where they are um, in regards to their teaching skills and then where they should be and what's, what supports that they can use to get them to that next place, right? So it's an all-inclusive kind of system change that we embarked on. It's not really just teacher evaluation. It affects all these different pieces in our organization. It's really made us rethink the role of administrator um, on the campus because the administrator is not just going in and checking off a list. They're actually having to have these really deep <laughs> philosophical conversations with teachers on you know, how they think about teaching and then be the support to help teachers make that transition and, and improve their teaching and become more effective. Um, it's made teachers, it's given a, us a common language for teachers and administrators around what effective teaching looks like so that they can have conversations that make sense with each other um, and both have the same common end goal of reaching an effective teacher. Um, it's allowed teachers to step into leadership positions um, when we recognize, wow, this teacher is really, really good at you know, this one area of teaching. Let's use that. Let's recognize, acknowledge them, tell them they're good and say, how did you do that? Can you teach other teachers how to do that? You know, and reward them for being so great at what they do. So it's really changed our, our whole organization and what we focus on. We're very focused on effective teaching and and supporting teachers to become effective teachers and that's kind of where most of our resources are going to whether it be our time energy money um, is around effective teaching and that we think in turn will affect everything else behavior of students um, other decisions budgetary decisions should be based more around effective teaching student success obviously is going to come from the effective teaching part, part. So last year, we finished our evaluation um, process and the tools to do the evaluation and um, the multiple measures that we're going to use to evaluate a teacher. And our teachers voted to ratify and adopt that into our contract. So we do have multiple measure evaluations that we'll be using this year that include classroom observations. They include uh, student achievement on test scores, they include student, parent, and peer surveys um, on teachers' performance. And so that, that creates kind of a pie that will be used to evaluate um, a teacher as a whole. So we're really excited.